Good morning. It's Sunday, June 26th. And in the past, I have spoken many times about gun violence, about the 30 to 40,000 people we lose every year to gun violence, and about the mass shootings which seem to go on every day there's another mass shooting. But I want to tell you about the epidemic that's going on in this country that is much worse than the gun violence epidemic. This is an epidemic that kills 12 people every hour in this country. This is an epidemic that kills over 100,000 people a year. But gun violence is more exciting and much more noticeable, and it gets people because it gets a lot of news. But this epidemic is a quiet killer. There's no violence involved in it. And I am talking about the opioid crisis. And this is an epidemic that can be stopped. We have the knowledge to do that. More people are dying of drug overdoses in the U.S. today than at any point in modern history. Death rate surpassed 100,000 per year for the first time in 2021. And halfway through 2022 is even going up faster. The latest numbers to come out talk about 300 people per day. The sad part about this is that many people see this as an unavoidable byproduct of an unprecedented moment. But that's not really the case. We can blame the drug industry for malfeasance. And maybe economic inequality could be blamed also. Plus, let's look at the world-shaking pandemic. And all of these things have conspired in conjunction with one another to create part of this drug problem that we can't solve right now. But addiction itself is part of human experience. It's like cancer or diabetes or Alzheimer's. It's a disease, and it's as common as any of those other diseases. And it's our failure to treat it consistently or as vigorously as we can. Now, I'm not a health professional. I'm not a psychiatrist or a psychologist. I'm just a poor schlub who chooses to rant every morning or so. But in my research, I'm a good researcher. In my research, I have found that we are failing those who are addicted to drugs and alcohol. Because our system for treating these people is not adequate. It is not properly set up. In 1956, alcoholism was recognized as an illness. And mental illness and virtually all other forms were treated different. And most health conditions were treated by medical doctors who were funded through health insurance and restricted by many sets of regulations. Mental illness was separate, separate from mainstream medicine and in many cases not covered by insurance. And addiction, while linked to mental illness and alcoholism and drugs or something, wasn't the specialty of any. Addiction did not become a specialty of psychiatry until 1993. And despite being one of the most common conditions listed in the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, few psychiatrists have been adequately trained to treat addiction. It's an orphan disease. That's a sad statement to make here in 2022. Addiction receives a small fraction of the resources that are devoted to common psychiatric disorders. And whatever addiction treatments you get comes through different mechanisms and not necessarily through psychiatry. The reality is that addiction is a legitimate medical condition, a chronic relapsing brain disorder to be precise. And it's often triggered by mental illness or by social forces like poverty and childhood trauma. But the systems by which this disorder is treated right now have not shifted a court. They do not deal with the underlying cause of the disease. Now, they may be very difficult to figure out, and that's one of the problems. The people 
who we are entrusted to take care of those with addictive disorders are not necessarily 100% trained to do that particular field, that particular area of medicine or sociology or psychiatry or whatever you want to call it. In fact, right now in many states, addiction and mental health services are still effectively separate. Clinicians accustomed to treating one of the types of diseases are not necessarily comfortable treating the other. And efforts to break these walls down, so to speak, have not gone very far right now. The Federal Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration, which was introduced in the mid-2000s, failed failed to get anywhere in combining the two areas of mental health and addiction. So these programs that they had set up at that point in time were terminated. So right now I don't see any real solution to this problem. Just take New York for instance. Substance abuse and mental illness are still governed by two agencies. The Office of Addiction Services and Supports and the Office of Mental Health. And each of them has their own licensing requirements and their policies and their funding streams. And clinics that are licensed by both agencies are expected to follow separate rules and meet a whole bunch of separate regulatory requirements that include separate financial records, separate medical records, separate physical spaces, all depending on which condition they are treating in which patient. And many of these patients are multi-disease. They have both situations. They're addicted and they have mental illness. And this is the situation in most of the country. Most clinics find that these strictures are too time-consuming and expensive to deal with. And so they deal with one side or the other, but they don't get to the crux of the matter. And as a result, most of these clinics are licensed by only one agency or the other. So a disease which has multiple areas of of infection is not being treated properly across this country. And that is why we are failing those with mental health issues and those who are addicted to drugs. And that is why we are losing 300 people a day. Because we haven't figured out how to treat these people. We haven't got to the root causes of what happens, which are very difficult. Mental illness is not an easy thing to deal with. I leave you with that, that we have one epidemic that doesn't look like it's getting the proper attention. It's killing three times as many people as God. So have a great day, and I'll see you in the morning. Bye.